Ah yes, bells ringing, soul guys screaming, everyone's happy and cheerful, it is indeed a magical time. Happy holidays everyone, and let us all remember Himeno, cause she was absolutely awesome. Also, our group finally becomes friends, and Denji unlocks a new skill? So yeah, let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to one of the bloodiest reviews of Chainsaw Man. Seriously, this episode was so bloody, I can't even show half of it here on YouTube. It also concluded this first season of the show and I will keep making videos about it. So don't forget to subscribe and to follow me here and also on TikTok for the fastest updates. This episode picks up from the previous one and Aki is strangled by the ghost devil. We get a very fast glimpse of Himeno, which looks beautiful by the way. We also jump to a flashback of her offering him his first cigarette, one she kept for him because he was underaged. From here, things got a little bit confusing, I must admit. The ghost devil hands Aki what I assume is the same cigarette Himeno saved for him. On it was written, easy revenge. From that moment, Aki was able to just walk past the ghost devil, climb on top of it and take down its head. Now yes, I get that a ghost doesn't have eyes, she can only see fear, and Aki simply stopped being afraid and was able to go past it. But does the fact that she doesn't have eyes make her not feel someone walking on top of it? And why did it offer the cigarette to him in the first place? Was it affected by Imano somehow? At first I was sure the ghost devil decided to protect Aki because of Himeno, but then again it tried to kill him just now. So I am sorry, but I felt this scene was here to be an emotional memorial for Himeno, but sadly it didn't make much sense, to me at least. After he kills the devil, Sawatari tries to summon the snake, but Kubeni saved the day. Again, this girl always shows up at the perfect time, which made me think it got to do with her contract, which she didn't want to reveal. Aki tells her to not kill Sawatari. Kubeni always says she is going to quit this devil hunting job, but apparently she decided to stay because they should be getting bonuses soon. Next, we go to Power and Denji. These two always get into the stupidest fights. This time, he was grossed out from her munching on a zombie hand, which for her seemed like perfectly fine meat. They soon stop on a floor full of zombies. Denji tries to be quiet, but Power just has to be Power, which is loud. Extremely loud. She jumps off to fight the zombies and it looks like she's having a good time, similar to Denji when he is in his devil form. She keeps playing with all of the zombies and Denji keeps going up to meet Sword Guy and two henchmen. This guy is freaking weird and I don't know what he really wants. He constantly talks about wanting to kill Denji. He doesn't seem concerned with Denji's heart or the gun devil, but here he tells him he is willing to turn himself in if Denji atones for killing Papa Yakuza and their friends. Denji tells him he did it because they became zombies and that makes Sword Guy angrier. Here we learn that his heart was replaced with the Katana Devil, so I guess this is Katana Dude from now. But he also mentions that he himself had a hard time after killing zombies. They were once living people and killing them sometimes kept him up at night. But unlike him, Denji doesn't feel a thing about killing them and Katana Dude says his heart is not even human anymore. He tells Denji that if he has any decency left, he should let them kill him. And of course, Denji is not up for that. Denji pulls his cord and we see how Katana Dude does his thing, removing his own hand to reveal his katana. They blast through the building wall and start fighting in the air. And I have to give credit again to Mappa's animators for these great fighting scenes throughout this entire episode. The music syncs in perfectly with the vibe of the fight. Everything looks brutal when Chainsaw and Katana clash and both smash into the rooftops. Denji can sure fight, but Katana Dude still seems more experienced. He manages to knock Denji a few times and they end up on top of a moving train. Denji tells him that he loves his current life and that he will keep fighting to protect it. They keep fighting on top of the train until Denji is knocked down again and Katana Guy drops on top of him. They both break through the roof while all the train passengers run for their lives. Katana Dude knocks Denji to the next cart and then prepares for his fast slice attack. Here we see proof Denji is still human as he clearly concerned for the woman next to him. For me, that's a pretty big sign of being human, trying to help someone weaker than you. But all that doesn't concern Katana Dude and he runs through Denji taking off one of his hands. Even here Denji is still himself, telling Katana Dude to maybe stop using this move, like asking your big brother to stop using that move that keeps killing you in Mortal Kombat. Of course that makes Katana Man more upset and he takes off his other hand. He tells Denji to apologize for killing Papa Yakuza before he dies, but Denji still wants to fight, he has one more chainsaw left. They both launch at each other and Katana Dude breaks Denji's last chainsaw. But here came the twist, 
While Katana Dude was aiming for his head, he didn't pay attention to his legs. Denji apparently just unlocked some new skill. He grew a chainsaw on one of his legs and cut Katana Dude in half. He literally split him into two, and that was pretty insane. But really, I think there is something significant to this new leg chainsaw because this is the first time we have ever seen it this season. Katana Dude then wakes up in what is soon to be his worst day ever. Denji knows that this guy is like him, basically immortal. They are waiting for the police, but Denji is not satisfied yet. This guy killed Himeno, but now he's only going to sit in prison? That doesn't seem painful enough. So Denji decides on a fun little contest just as Aki arrives. He wants them both to kick Katana Man in the nuts to see who makes him scream harder. And I loved his expression. It was priceless. He wasn't ready for this level of insanity. Aki is not sure at first. This is not what Himeno would have wanted. But maybe this is something he wants. Something to make him feel better. He looks at Himeno's cigarette and asks Denji what he gets if he wins. The answer is nuts. The answer is always nuts. And again, Katana Dude crying while they are slowly walking towards him was so funny. We jump to a shot of the city. We see all the people involved getting arrested. And then the best part of this episode. Aki and Denji bonding over kicking Katana Dude. And seriously, it was so funny but somehow also so emotional. I absolutely loved it. And it's sure nice seeing Denji and Aki finally bonding, even if it's over something completely sadistic. But I guess Katana Dude deserved it. The credits roll and we see Makima in a private meeting with someone. We don't know who that is, but he's probably someone pretty important. She informs him that Sawatari had a contract with a gun devil. The Yakuza got guns, and in exchange, they were supposed to deliver the chainsaw heart. Conveniently enough, Sawatari is killed by the snake devil before she can give them some more information. That is probably part of the contract she had with the gun devil. The upside is that they got 1.4 kilograms of gun flesh from that building, and combining it with the 5 kilos they have with them, the gun flesh piece started to move. It's big enough to lead them to the gun devil, but we don't get to know the location just yet. We get a really fun ending thing with Power, Denji and Aki just hanging out as friends, which is really nice. They all eat together and Power and Denji fall asleep. We get Aki finally having a quiet moment to himself and smoking the last cigarette Himeno left him. From there we jump to a strange dream Denji is apparently having for a while, only keeps forgetting it when he wakes up. In his dream, he is still a kid, he walks up to a door and hears Puchita on the other side. He wants to see him, but Puchita warns him never to open the door. And then Denji wakes up without remembering a thing. And in the few last seconds of the episode, we see some girl looking for Denji, wondering which mouse he would rather be. The city mouse or the country mouse, which is a reference to Aki's brother's book, which I explained in this video. And that is the end of the final episode of the first season of Chainsaw Man. And wow, it was a good one. I still don't know if I'm going to read the manga, but I'm going to make some more Chainsaw Man videos before I do. So yes, there will be more Chainsaw Man content on this channel, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And that is all for this video, my Chainsaw loving friends, and I will see you all real soon in my next video, and even sooner in the comments. But until then, let me just remind you all to dedicate your hearts to all of humanity, inside and outside the walls.